Am I the a-hole for calling my fiance lazy for wanting to be a stay-at-home wife? I'm 42 male, am engaged to who I feel is the one, 33 female. We had been dating for just over three years and I proposed last month. Last night after another session of wedding planning, my fiance asked if I would be alright with her being a stay-at-home wife. At first I laughed because I thought she was joking, but she was being very serious. She told me not to laugh and said she wants to be a stay-at-home wife. I asked her why, as we both make pretty good money at our jobs and we can't afford our current lifestyle with just one income. She says it's because I make a lot more than her, which is true as I make about 40% more and that we could scale back our lifestyle. And then said it's been on my mind a lot and I think working 9 to 5 just isn't for me. I asked her if she was being serious and she confirmed that she is. I said that I'm not comfortable with that idea and said maybe if we have kids, she could be a stay-at-home mom, but I'm not cool with her being a stay-at-home wife. But she said that I was being manipulative since we're both child-free, but I just said that as a hypothetical since I'm not at all okay with being the sole breadwinner. That devolved into a pretty heated argument, with her saying that I should support her dreams, but she never stated what she wants to do with her staying at home, even though I did ask. So this is where maybe the a-hole. In the heat of the moment, I said, where's this coming from? Why is it your dream to be a stay-at-home wife? Is it your dream to be lazy? She got really upset at that and had gone to her mother's and said, we'll talk more when you come down. I'll be real here. I don't want her to be a stay-at-home wife. I'm not okay with being the sole breadwinner and I do not wish to support this dream. I want a partner in life, not a dependent doing nothing productive with their days. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. So she waits until you propose and she thinks she has you wrapped around her fingers to tell you her dream of being lazy and then has the nerve to say that you're the manipulative one? Jesus. That's a very good point. Up until I proposed to her, she was just filled with so much ambition and that's one of the reasons I fell in love in the first place. Feels like it came out of left field her sudden desire not to work. Oh man, I feel genuinely bad for you. I'm wondering, what are her friends' jobs? Like, does she surround herself with people that might have the same mindset when it comes to not working? All her friends and our mutual friends are all pretty ambitious people. Even the stay-at-home moms are very driven in terms of child rearing. This is very simple. Are you prepared to lower your standard of living solely to support her financially? Are you prepared to grind five days a week for the next 20 plus years at a job while she does whatever she wants to do? Personally, I'd say when you ask her what her dreams are and she dodged the question, she told you everything you need to know. Lol, support her dreams. If my husband had a dream to go back to college, I would support that. If he had a dream to start his own business in an area he was passionate about, I would support that. But if he had a dream to sit on his butt and play video games slash be a stay-at-home husband, he would soon be supporting my dream to be divorced. It sounds like you and your fiancé have very different values in life. Not day home. This all day. I've taken a few months to myself between jobs in the past. It doesn't take much time or effort to shop and clean for a household containing just two able-bodied adults. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not allowing my fiancé to dictate what my mom wears to our wedding? My fiancé and I are both Indian. Her family has been in the U.S. for a couple generations, and I was born in India but came here at six years old and don't remember much of it. My mom hates India. It hates being Indian due to a lot of trauma she faced, such as being married off very young, being treated badly for being a girl, being slightly darker skinned than her sister, and then being trapped in a very unhealthy marriage. My mom left my dad a couple years after we came to the U.S. and was shamed by her family. She now totally denies being Indian and wants nothing to do with it. We are having a big, mostly traditional Indian wedding, which my mom is cool with, but my mom wants to wear an evening gown and not a sari. But my fiancé wants all of the family in traditional Indian attire, and this has turned into a huge fight and neither of them are backing down. My fiancé feels that my mom is going to stand out and that she is being disrespectful but not going along with our wishes for one day. My mom feels that my fiancé is being controlling and invalidating her feelings about her identity. Then my mom's husband got involved and got into it with my future mother-in-law, and now everything is a mess. My mom showed me some of the dresses she's looking at, and none of them are attention-seeking or anything crazy. So I put my foot down with my fiancé and said she can't force my mom to wear a sari. My fiancé and future mother-in-law think I'm being an a-hole, 
but my mom is grateful and even said she can wear red, traditional Indian color, if my fiancé is so worried about her standing out. I thought that was a good compromise, but my fiancé feels I'm being a spineless mama's boy. Not stay home. I'd go so far as to say, sorry, but not sorry. Not stay home. I'm usually in the camp of supporting your wife over your mother, but it seems your wife is being callous for no good reason. Is she the self-centered and selfish in other ways? This would be a situation I'd be taking a step back from, to see if this is even a woman you want to marry after this. Not stay home. Your mother is likely already putting on a strong face to watch her son be married surrounded by a cultural aesthetic that reminds her of past trauma. I can't imagine someone I love not recognizing that strength, instead of trying to drape that trauma on them. I would keep asking your fiancé why your mother's mental health means so little to her. This. Please continue to stand up for your mother. Bridal entitlement and lack of empathy hurts my brain. Not today, home. Your fiancé isn't marrying herself, so she doesn't get to make all the decisions alone. Hopping onto the back of this comment, I would see this as a big red flag. If she can't compromise in one measly dress, which her mother was even willing to look like a traditional sari slash dress, then who knows what she can't compromise on. I don't want to be the one to say it, but maybe it may not be your healthiest decision. Edit. Well, I spent all day reading through some very thorough and insightful comments and talking to my fiancé, and the wedding is off. Thanks everyone for taking the time to read and respond. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for kicking my boyfriend out over my cat? For context, my 24 female boyfriend 30 male and I recently moved in together. It's something we've been talking about and when his lease ended, he moved into my apartment. I have a cat, Millie, who is my baby girl that I've had since she was a kitten. Back when my boyfriend and I first started dating, he made a joke that if we were ever going to live together, he'd have to get rid of that cat, which I dismissed at the time. When he would come over, he would ignore Millie, making jokes about how cats are stuck up, how much she's a dog person. Again, I dismissed this, because he never acted hostile towards her, and I figured it was just a preference. When we started to get serious about moving in, he asked if I would consider giving her away because he didn't like the idea of living with a cat. He almost laughed before realizing he was serious. I told him that under no circumstances would I get rid of my cat. I felt guilty about being unwilling to compromise, but he actually took it well and reassured me that if she was this important to me, he'd get over it. Fast forward to last night. I don't think he realized I was in the kitchen when he came home. Millie was on a couch, and I heard him go into the room and give the sigh. But before I could call out, I heard him say, You're so freaking worthless. It terrified me because I've never heard him speak with such malice. He sounded like a different person. It was just so cold and hostile that I panicked and rushed out there to see him looking at Millie. Here's where I might be the a-hole. I completely freaked out. I was yelling asking what he thought was doing talking to her like that. He jumped, and I scooped Millie up and told him to leave my apartment right now. He looked so stunned and started to argue, asking where was he supposed to go. I told him that I don't care, he just needs to leave. He was pissed and said he was going for a drive and slammed the door behind him. I immediately started sobbing and holding Millie. I was shaking, and she could tell I was upset and kept cuddling me. She calmed me down, and later when he texted asking if he could come back, I said yes. I put Millie in the bedroom so we could talk. We were both a lot calmer, and I felt awful after we explained aside. I'll often call Millie little names, and he said he was just trying to be playfully mean too and misjudged his tone, but he said it felt awful that I chose a cat over him and that he called it my apartment, what it's supposed to be our place. He told me he was constantly feeling second best to Millie who I wouldn't even consider rehoming, and I had thrown him out over an animal when he's a person. I explained to him how much he means to me and apologized for ever making him feel like this wasn't his home. I think he might have overreacted, but I just don't know. He's my boyfriend, and she's something I kept refusing to compromise on. But I also don't believe that he just misjudged his tone. Am I the a-hole? Not an a-hole, and he's lying now. Don't let him guess like you. Your cat is going to go missing someday. This, 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 this. If for some reason you do continue this, Make sure you have plenty of photographs of her and you as proof that she's yours, and that she's microchipped because she will end up on the streets or dropped off at a shelter. Not an a-hole. Rehome your a-hole boyfriend. 
You shouldn't have dismissed those earlier jokes. On a first date, you should have said something like, "All jokes aside, I would never get rid of my cat." I can't be as unworthless comment being his attempt at being playful. He is just making up excuses because he caught him. Agreed. He got caught and came up with a BS excuse. Ditch him before the cat goes missing or worse. Not day home. The way a person talks about an animal or treats an animal is a good indication of the type of person they are. After all the talk about wanting to get rid of her, I could never trust him alone with her. How do I know he won't poison her, physically hurt her, or dump on the side of the road? If it was my boyfriend, he would be gone, flat out gone. If you don't like cats slash dogs, that's fine. But when you are just nasty about it, then you cross a line. Yep. If this is how he is when he thinks Opie isn't there and is his regular mood, I dread to think how he is in a bad mood. Next story: Am I the a-hall for implying that my wife is the cookie monster? My wife and I have a five-year-old daughter, Ellie. Ellie loves cookies and takes it very seriously when her cookies go missing. My wife is also pregnant with twins and sometimes loses track of how many cookies she eats. Last night, my wife came to me and said she ate the rest of the cookies. I said no problem, and that we'll go to the store today for more. Ellie went to the kitchen for a snack and looked into the cookie jar to find it empty. She ran to me and said that we had an emergency. The cookies were missing. I helped her look for them, but after a few minutes, she realized they were really gone. I told her the cookie monster must have snuck in while sleeping and stolen the cookies. Needless to say, she is very mad at the cookie monster right now. I took her to Target, and when we were buying cookies, she said we need to get another package to hide in the pantry in case the cookie monster came back. I said that was a good idea, and we left with our replacement cookies and our emergency cookies. When we got home, my wife pulled me aside and said that I shouldn't have said the cookie monster stole the cookies when I knew she did it, and that I'm implying that she's the cookie monster. I didn't think it was a big deal, but she seemed pretty hurt, so I wanted to know if I was the a-hole. Edit. The Cookie Monster left a card for Ellie apologizing for eating all of the cookies without asking, and left her a Cookie Monster stuffed animal. The only downside is the card and stuffed animal were surrounded by cookie crumbs, and it looks like there's a missing cookie from the jar. Now for the comments, I love how wholesome this is. Not a home. Your wife is pregnant, so she's extra sensitive, which is totally normal. I hope your daughter will forgive the actual Cookie Monster eventually. He was my favorite when I was a kid. I have a feeling he's gonna sneak in again tonight and leave. And I'm sorry for stealing your cookies card. She should be fine once she gets an apology. You're the best. One day you and your wife will enjoy laughing about this. Until then, keep doing everything you're doing because you seem to have found a perfect way to support your pregnant wife. He may leave her a cookie or a cookie monster stuffy with her card, but he is not sure yet. Either way, this is gonna be an awesome story for the kids at the school tomorrow. No way else here. Five-year-olds can overreact and can get very upset over tiny things. She is clearly ticked at the Cookie Monster. I can also see your wife being upset or even embarrassed about being the Cookie Monster. Though it'd be a lot more embarrassing if your daughter had said, "I need to hide the cookies or else mommy will eat all of them." Having her be mad at the Cookie Monster keeps her from being mad at her mom. So nobody has done anything wrong except the Cookie Monster. Not today, home. It was a joke. And I bet your wife is hormonal due to being pregnant, so is more sensitive and more prone to eating more food. Don't mention it again; it'll blow over. I'm not mentioning it, but Ellie's not over it yet. She can hold a grudge when it comes to her cookies. Now for the last story: Am I the a-hole? My boyfriend inherited a million dollars, and I want him to pay more towards the household. My boyfriend inherited a million dollars early last year, both cash and investments. We would both rather have his mom back, but that's not possible. Over the past ten years, my boyfriend has been unemployed many times. We agreed that due to his money issues, he would pay one third of his take-home pay to rent slash utilities. Until this past year, he also used my car when he needed. He would buy groceries, but I paid for most things. Now he has money. I've asked him to pay more in rent. His equal share would be six hundred fifty dollars more than what he pays. When I brought it up. He suggested an extra two hundred fifty dollars, still leaving me to cover four hundred dollars more than him. This hurt my feelings, and we had a fight. He recently complained that he was the only one going to Costco, and that he shouldn't have to purchase so much. 
but he has made some small purchases for himself lately. Speakers, collectible skates, and snowboards. His wording is, I can't afford to do blank. But I'm not asking for anything more than household expenses. But I know he can afford to do more, and it hurts that he doesn't think he needs to. I suggested he look at what it would cost for him to live on his own, and it would be about five times what he is currently paying, all in with all our utilities and such. I think he is subsidizing his lifestyle at my expense, and he doesn't think he needs to contribute money because I don't need it. I'm not saving money, and really would like to have something for retirement. I said that if he doesn't want to pay his share, then he should have his own place. Am I the a-hole here? Not today, Hall. Kick him out. He'll start paying his own way real quick. You think he is using you to subsidize your lifestyle? Oh no, Opie. He is using you. He's a freeloading, greedy cheapskate. Put him and his million dollars on the curb and go live your best life. Ten years? Ages? Tell him to put up or shut up. Not today, Hall. That is what makes it just so egregious. I know a lot of people feel inheritance should be theirs and not something put into a family account. But when I was in a similar situation recently, I used the money to help my family out as a whole as I know my wife would do the same. During our lives, our earning power has varied dramatically and we always just pulled our income and paid off bills and rent etc. without making exact amounts. That is, we did what we could to cover costs and never nickeled and dimed. And this was after two years, not ten years.